Hey, welcome back to another Foxy Games UK news video. If you like this sort of thing, like, subscribe, hit notification, and all that good stuff. Man, it's been quite a few days, hasn't it? PS5 Pro launched Thursday, November 7th, just last week. And let me tell you, this system, it's absolutely amazing. PS5 Pro, PSSR image quality is so good. I'm actually choosing it over native 4K modes. And nobody, absolutely nobody I know who actually owns the Pro and has actually played its enhanced games expressed any disappointment to me or online. And to think we're just in the infancy of Sony's incredible AI machine learning tech. And let me tell you something before we get into the news. PS5 Pro is best displayed on a 120Hz VRR enabled and it's absolutely essential VRR enabled OLED or mini LED panel and then it's an absolute beast because of the meager 10% uplift in frame rate VRR is going to be very helpful in filling those minor gaps of one two three four five frames I played Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty and it looks so dang crisp it gives the appearance of being boosted to near 4k that's the that's just a raw boost image quality boost raw power pushing that giving it that 4k look and vrr let me tell you really makes all the difference with these patched and unpatched standard ps5 60 fps performance modes just an absolute beast of a system and you know sony confirmed that ps5 pro launch sales are ahead of the launch PS4 Pro sales. But the real kicker, the real kicker here is PS5 Pro is 699 US dollars, whereas the PS4 Pro when it launched was 399 US dollars. That is quite an achievement for a quote unquote overpriced console that many wrote off as a quote unquote total disaster. 2025 will be a big, big year for PlayStation gamers. Now let's get into our first news story courtesy of InsiderGaming.com. All links are available in this video's description. The headline reads PS5 Pro selling better than PS4 Pro in the same period according to Sony. Sony's chief financial officer CFO Hiroki Totoki has gone on record suggesting that the PS5 Pro is selling just fine per the company's expectations. In a recent statement, the CFO, also the firm's COO as chief operations officer, said that the PS5 Pro is performing slightly stronger than the PS4 Pro did within the same period back in 2016. And he was frank in noting that Sony didn't expect large sales going into the manufacture of the console since it is for a very niche audience. So in a recent statement, grabbed by Nikkei Asia, Hiroki Totoki explained how things were looking for the PS5 Pro, which was released on November 7. He says it's a high-end product targeted at core customers. So we haven't been eyeing a large sales plan to begin with. And I'm under the impression that the, the product is performing slightly stronger than the pre-orders of the PS4 Pro did during the same period. So I, I don't think it's adversely affecting the product's sales plan. Now, critics were quick to point out how strange it sounds that the CFO is merely under the impression that the console is selling well, but let's ignore that for now because who's within the headquarters of Sony? He hears the murmurings, he hears the whispers, he hears what other departments are saying. So it's not that he's under the impression, he's obviously got data to uh, correlate this, but uh, he's not going into details here. Now, ahead of the release of the PS5 Pro, a few issues surfaced that many believed would hamper sales of the console. Firstly, the price point. At $699, the PS5 Pro is one of the most expensive consoles released in a very long time, but that doesn't appear to have been a problem at all. Also, users were concerned that the console wouldn't make enough of a difference to warrant the upgrade. It's technically impressive, but many will be reluctant to purchase something new just to really tease a few extra frames or a little bit more clarity out of their console regardless financial projections at Sony are on the up and if the Toki statement is anything to go by so are sales of the PS5 Pro just how many of those sales have been claimed by scalpers though well let's say that scalpers are having a pretty hard time at the moment some of them having to sell the console at half the price of its retail recommended price because they expected 
there to be a shortage and there was not. Well done Sony for having enough units out there for everybody. So much stock available in some markets that they're being forced to sell them at a loss. So did you invest in a PS5 Pro? Sound off in the video comments. And in our next new story, this one comes by the way of GamingVault.com and PS5 Pro's PSSR, that's PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution, is on par with Nvidia's DLSS and Intel XESS, according to a developer. Gergo Horvath, a graphics programmer at Gaijin, believes that PSSR is not only on par with DLSS and XESS, but also better than FSR in many respects interesting so the pricing issues aside there's no doubt that the playstation 5 pro is a technical masterpiece featuring top of the line gpu and new software techniques and the ps5 pro comes off as an easy recommendation for someone who is an enthusiast someone like me or perhaps you listening to this video right now now one particular game game changing feature from a technical perspective is the console support for pssr it's an image reconstruction technique which ensures minimum hit to image quality at higher frame rates. Contemporary PC solutions include the likes of Nvidia's DLSS, Intel XCSS and AMD's FSR. Now, whether PS4 Pro's PSSR is better than the aforementioned solutions is something that will be uncovered in the future, but one developer from Gaijin believes that it's on par with DLSS and XCSS. Here's a quote. We're currently using it in Enlisted. During development and playtesting, we found PSSR to be on par with NVIDIA DLSS and XESS, the other two machine learning based super resolution methods. Now, Gogo Horvath is a graphics programmer at Gaijin, so he should know what he's talking about. And he claimed in an interview that while in my opinion, PSSR produces less blur, ghosting and unwanted flicker compared to AMD FSR, these technologies are constantly improving, so I find it impressive that the first version, first iteration of PSSR is already head to head with other more mature solutions. Now this is certainly an interesting take given the likes of DLSSS have seen numerous improvements over their multiple iterations over the years. If early titles on PS5 Pro can give equivalent results, we are more than curious to see the results when Sony adopts this technology for the inevitable PlayStation 6. Horvath also explained how they are using PSSR to achieve higher frame rates at 4K resolutions, also thanks to PSSR. Enlisted and Wolf Under, the company's two ongoing projects will run at 4K and 120 FPS on Sony's latest gaming machine. And there are currently three 8K games for Sony's PS5 Pro. That's the F1 2024, the incoming patch for Gran Turismo 7, No Man's Sky, yeah, that's three already, and the system's only been out days. Here's a quote, for the PS5 Pro's release of Enlisted, we have switched from a fixed resolution to using dynamic resolution to get with upscaling techniques for both the base and pro version of the console to make sure we have a stable frame rate at all times while the internal rendering resolution is automatically adjusted. This made 4K at 120 FPS gaming possible for PS5 Pro players. PSSR, of course, does a better job for the PS5 Pro's release of War Thunder. Well, We'd like to offer the opportunity to play the game at 4K at 120fps resolution from day one. More visual updates will follow with the next major update release in a week, and even more are under development. Great news. So the PS5 Pro bought most of the improvements to existing PS5 games. No Man's Sky runs at a blistering 8K 60fps on consoles. Baldur's Gate runs at 4K 30fps in quality mode. Star Wars Jedi Survivor now reaches 4K. On until Dawn Remake re received a new performance and fidelity mode, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth received a new versatility mode, which has to be seen to be believed. It'll be interesting to see how native PS5 games like Ghost of Yote and Death Stranding 2 will take advantage of the console's processing power. Both are due in 2025, along with a slew of many other Sony first party and third party games. Well, that brings us to the end of the video what say you sound off in the comments if you like this sort of thing like subscribe hit notification and all that good stuff until next time enjoy ps5 pro and your ps5 still a damn good machine ps5 but until next time 
Always remember, play games, not corporations. <laughs>